Hello all. So in this lecture, we will see about control changes. So in the previous programs, we have already seen certain instructions that will be repeated in a sequence, that will be done in a sequence. So we have seen different sequence of operations. So next, if we want to repeat some statements in a program, we need some other control statements. So in this lecture, we will see about for loops or loops. So loops are actually repetition statements. So these loops can be repeated or this is any, if you want to repeat certain number of statements, this loops can be used. So repetition of the action, here we call it as pass or an iteration. So we have two types of repeated loops. One is definite iteration, which is defined over a number of times that we want to repeat. And the second is indefinite iteration. The program determines how many times that statement should be repeated. So we'll see this example. So if you are, want to repeat this uh, general statement for count range of some, if you want to repeat some statement five times, you can simply specify like this for count. This is a variable count in range is a function. And we are specifying, we have to specify some integer value. This specifies that it should be repeated five number of times. You know, if you want to print something like hello. If you want to print something like hello. So this print five times. So this will be printed five times. Okay. So this is a general syntax for variable in range and integer expression and in a colon and you can include any number of statements not any number of statements can be included in this loop if you want to print some other thing print how how are you how are you or something like that you can simply print So uh, both these statements will be repeated five number. So the only thing you have to notice, you have to uh, you have to include it the same at, at the same index. Both the statements should be at the same index. If it's in a different index, then it will cause a syntax error. So if you are specifying like this, it will cause a syntax error. The only thing you have to notice, it should be at the same index. Both statements should be at the same index, then only those statements will be repeated. I will show another example. If you want to find 2 raised to 2, 2 raised to 3, if you want to find 2 raised to 3, I will give an exponent value equal to 3. You have to find 2 raised to 3. Now you are using loop, you are going to find out the same thing product equal to 1 for how range of you have to repeat three times okay for count in a range of exponent call it you have to repeat for five times product equal to Product into number, product into number, and the right print the product. Okay, you can print the product. The product will be printed like this. Finally, if you find the product, it will be two eight, two raised to three equal to eight. So each time, what happens is uh, at the First time it will be product into number, then it will be product, then new uh, product is initially 1 and number is 2, 1 into 2 will be 2, we will print 2, then the second time it will be uh, product it will be 2 and number will be 2, 2 into 2 is 4, then next time product will be 4 and the number will be 2, 4 into 2 it is 8. So finally it will stop at after 3 iterations or 3 passes. Okay. Next is count control loops. 
So when this Python executes this uh, for, we have discussed what happens. It starts from zero and you will. I'll show that example. Then you will understand. Like simply printing the count back for counting range of four. Okay. Now I am simply printing this count. I am simply printing this count value. So what happens? So the count, if you are giving specifying this range of four, so you have to remember that count starts from zero. So first pass it will be count value will be zero. Then it will end at this. If it is n, then it will end at n minus one. So zero, one, two, and three. So each time the count value will be incremented zero. Then the second count value will become one, two, and three. So if we are giving as 4, it will give us 0, 2, or so it will count from 0 to 3. Okay. So I will give this another example to show this property equal to 1 and for a range of 4. If you want to find 1 into 2 into 3 into 4. So what you have to do is, so you have to print product equal to product to count so to be count plus one okay okay Count plus one. Okay. Count plus one. Okay. Now, if you find the product, it will be twenty-four. So it is actually one into two into three into four. So it is four factorial. So what happened is we have specified count plus one. We have to specify this count plus one. Then only otherwise what happens is count the initial value will be zero. So if you want to do this one into one equal then one into two. After that two into one, two into three, two into three into four, like this it will go up. So you have to specify as count plus one. So otherwise you can change this. What I have to do is another way to do this uh, same thing is you can include the same statement here. Now if you want to remove this count plus one. You can remove it. So, if you want to specify like this, the only thing you have to do is you have to specify this lower bound and upper bound. So, I have specified this lower bound as 1 and upper bound as 5. Now, the loop will repeat from 1 to 4. 1, 2, 3, and 4. It will not go to 5. So, you can simply print the product and see. So the result will be 24. So in this way you can count. This is these are known as count control loops. So if you want to do this for if you want to do the same thing in range, you can specify this lower bound and upper bound. Lower bound and upper bound. The only thing is lower bound plus upper bound plus one you have to specify. So if you want to four, then you have to specify four plus one, it will be five. So this count will begin at 1, it will start from 1, 2, 3 and 4. So in this way you can specify this also. So I will show another example. I am specifying this lower bound. We have already seen this integer function. What that does is uh, integer of, if you want to convert the string into an integer type, in of enter the lower bound okay enter the lower bound
also going to put this Okay, enter the lower bound. I am specifying the lower bound as one. Now I am giving the upper bound. I am using the same code upper equal to enter the upper bound. So, what I am going to do is I am going to find the sum of 10 natural numbers. So, enter the upper bound. It is and giving it as is saying it as 10. Now I want to count, so I have to initialize some variables, some equal to zero. Then for count in range of lower comma, if you want to count one plus two plus three up to ten, then you are speak to upper plus one. So lower is lower is one and upper is ten. So if you want to count to up to uh, 10, then you have to include, make it at 11. Then only it will count from upper to low. Then you have to find sum equal to sum plus count. And if you print the sum, you can find the result as 55. So it is equal to 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus up to 5. So if you want to do the same thing, so what you have done is you have specified the lower bound as 1 and upper bound as 10. So instead of specifying the lower comma upper, you have specified as upper plus 1. So if you are simply specifying upper only here, what happens is it will count only up to 9. 1 plus 2 plus up to 9 only. So if you want 10, you have to include it as uh, 1 upper plus 1. Okay. So this is a general syntax for variable in range lower bound comma upper bound plus one then that loop body you can include any number of statements in this so as it should be upper bound plus one so we have already seen this example then another thing you have to know is augmented assignment we if we want to use the abbreviated form of uh, assignment statement is possible so if you are initializing a equal to 17 and this equal to five uh, if we want to include a equal to a plus 3, instead of writing this assignment statement, we can make it a plus equal to 3 or a minus equal to 3 is equal to a equal to a minus 3 or a into equal to 3, it is equal to a equal to a into 3. So this thing will be multiplied and the result will be stored in assigned in a. So if you want to concatenate strings also, it is possible s plus equal to there. So s is high. So uh, S plus there means high there will be joined together, concatenated. So the general syntax is variable operator equal to expression. So variable and operator equal to. So there should not be any space between this operator and equal to. So if you see these examples, there is no space between plus and equal to or minus and equal to. So or percentage and equal to, there is no space. You should not include any space in so this is known as augmented assignment. Then one error that can occur in this for loop is we call it as off by one error. So this will, for loops are very easy to write or easy to write correctly also. The only one possible error is the loop fails to perform the expected number of iterations. We may require that iterations should be done or number of passes should be done at 10. But usually when we write that an error can occur, a logical error can occur, it will go only, it will execute only nine number of times. So this type of error is known as off by one error. So this can occur at any time. So we, it is because we incorrectly specify the upper bound of the loop. So we will see this example, then you will understand for bound in range of four. If you print this count, you can find out that the count starts from 0 and it ends till 3. The upper bound is, even though we have specified at 4, the count will start from 0 and end at 3 only. So you have to note this. So you might have thought it will execute up to 5, but it actually starts from 0 and it ends at 3. 
So this is known as off by one errors. In certain cases, we incorrectly specify this program. So in this in this program also, if you see this program, we can simply specify this program. And if you are simply giving this as simply giving this as uh, lower plus upper, this won't count. Sum will be only 45. It won't add that 10. Last number won't be added. This is known as off by one error. We actually wanted to perform 1 plus 2 plus 3 up to 10, but it has done only up to 9. So this is known as off by one error. This is always possible in the case of for loop. So this is a reference book by Fundamentals of Python by Kenneth Lambert. Thank you.